remove artificial sweeteners. There's been a lot of back and forth in the nutrition sphere about artificial sweeteners. Yes, they don't have calories, but there's some very interesting research, both on the way that artificial sweeteners, things like stevia, sucralose, which is Splenda, aspartame, can interrupt quorum sensing, which is communication between the microbes in your gut. And even more compelling to me is the research from Dana Small at Yale University. Hopefully I'll get her on the podcast soon, um, but I'm gonna show an article from her group from 2020. And what happened in this article was that Splenda was added to a drink with dextrose. So sucralose, a non-caloric sweetener, was added to a drink with dextrose, which is an oligosaccharide of glucose, so pure glucose. So there's no fructose in this drink. And what you have then when humans consume this drink, you have a mismatch between presented nutrients and sweetness. And what happened in both adult humans and especially in adolescent humans was that when carbohydrates were presented with artificial sweeteners, specifically sucralose in this case, people became insulin resistant really fast. There were metabolic derangements. I've never heard anyone talk about this in the health space and hat tip to my friend, Andrew Huberman, who turned me on to this research, but Andrew hasn't spoken about it yet on his podcast. I'm sure he will, but so many of the advocates for artificial sweeteners, I've never heard them address this. I don't think they're aware of this. Now, to be complete in my recount of this study's findings, and I'll show you the reference in a moment if you're watching on YouTube, when pure sucralose was given in a drink, there was no negative effect. But how often do humans only drink something with sucralose or only eat something with sucralose that has no other carbohydrates naturally occurring? Or how often do we eat something with sucralose or drink something with sucralose with other foods? So there is a possibility you would not escape the way that sucralose and other artificial sweeteners will affect the communication between your gut microbes. But there's a possibility that you could have a Diet Coke in the middle of the day with nothing else, no calories, no carbohydrates, and that may not be as harmful to your metabolism as drinking a Diet Coke with a, I don't know, whatever you want to eat, a piece of toast, a piece of fruit, a hamburger, anything with carbohydrates in it with that sucralose-containing beverage or food is going to mess up your body's connections between sweetness and presented calories, and that leads to insulin resistance in humans. It also does it in animal studies, but this is in humans, guys. So the other thing to note is that there are over 3,000 foods, probably close to 4,000 foods at this point, that have sucralose in them and added calories in the form of sugar. Why would they do that? Well, sucralose is sweet, so sucralose is also cheaper than sugar. So manufacturers can make something sweeter and say that it has less sugar and they can cut costs, but you're absolutely messing up the metabolism. I'm thinking about a lot of drinks. I believe Logan Paul's drink, Prime, has an artificial sweetener and sugar in it. And a lot of these drinks are doing this now, saying they have less sugar but they're giving you sugar, they're giving you carbohydrates, and they're giving you an artificial sweetener. That is very bad. And in fact, I think they would be better off from a metabolic perspective, either doing pure sucralose, which I don't think is the right option, or pure sugar, not high fructose corn syrup. From a metabolic perspective, pure sugar in those drinks would be better than sucralose plus sugar. So these drinks are a metabolic nightmare for humans, And yet we've just begun to understand this in the research and no one is being held accountable for this. And they're being marketed as lower sugar. This is actually a really, really important finding, something that you should not ignore. So let me show you this article. Title of the paper is Short-Term Consumption of Sucralose with, but not without carbohydrate, impairs neural and metabolic sensitivity to sugar in humans. It's from Cell Metabolism 2020. Again, the final author is Dana Small. You can find her YouTube a presentation at the Neuron Conference, which talks about this at around minute 36. So I gave you guys a summary of what happened in this. If you really want to go read the paper, you can see it. But this is a metabolic nightmare for humans, and no one should ignore this. And no one who is saying that artificial sweeteners are benign should be allowed to say that without explaining this finding and explaining how this is somehow benign for humans. I think this is horrible for humans. So step three remove artificial sweeteners. Do not mess with this stuff, guys. And yes, this means stevia. And yes, this means monk fruit. Until we have data to show those are any different, 
you are mismatching a sweet taste with a caloric presentation. And I believe that is going to cause metabolic derangement in humans. So I don't, I've always been suspicious of monk fruit and stevia for a variety of reasons, but I don't think monk fruit is good for humans. And I think that this could be causing a divergence and a derangement in insulin sensitivity if you are eating those foods with presented other carbohydrates. And there's good data to suggest this, at least with sucralose. We need to do these studies with stevia, aspartame, and monk fruit as well to prove that those are not doing the same thing. We definitely know this with Splendo, which is sucralose. Again, 3,000 foods out there have sucralose and presented calories, like all these drinks and things like this, which are totally messing up our metabolism as humans. 